Hello and welcome to the first video about the Age of Discovery. This one is about explorers and matters of religion. In SOL 4A and 4B, we will explain the roles and economic motivations of explorers and conquistadors while describing the influence of religion by completing cause and effect graf graphic organizers. The big picture is that the expanding economies of European states stimulated increased trade with markets in Asia. With the loss of Constantinople in 1453, European nations fronting on the Atlantic sought new maritime routes for trade. Where Europeans explored, Christianity followed. And I want to highlight two things in this statement. First of all, the expanding economies, as in them coming out of the Dark Ages and that whole Renaissance thing we talked about, uh, of European states are stimulating increased trade. So it's increasing trade with Asia. And then Constantinople was right where the Ottoman Empire was trading at the end of the Silk Road there, like we learned about. And as a result, Europeans, uh, they wanted to get around the Ottoman Empire, so they were trying to find other ways. So nations fronting on the Atlantic, as in the Atlantic Ocean, sought new maritime sea trade routes. Just unpack that a little bit. Okay, so here are the causes of this age of discovery. There was demand for gold and spices and natural resources in Europe because of those new big economies. There is support for the diffusion, the spreading, diffusion means spreading on its own, of Christianity and political and economic competition between those European empires. Now, this often gets put into a, uh, an easy way of remembering those three. It's called the three Gs, greed, God, and glory. Some people say gold, God, and glory, but it's really greed. It's bigger than just gold. So greed, God, glory, G3. All right, here's an aside about religion, so just take a second. So exploration, migration, and colonization all led to this religious diffusion, which is the spread of religious beliefs across boundaries. Catholic and Protestant colonists carried their faith and language and cultures to the new lands, and in particular, Jesuits, uh, who were an order of Catholic priests, were really, really good at this and set up a lot of new and interesting ways and systems for doing it. Like, for instance, the mission system in Catholic New Spain was a way of bringing large numbers of the people who already lived in the new world into the Catholic religion and into their economic system. So many indigenous peoples, the people already living in the Americas and Africa and Asia, um, adopted or were forced to adopt parts of Christianity. And so you can see that uh, along the major world religions map here, this current day, you've got Roman Catholic, that pink, and Protestant, that purple. Um, they are all over the New World, this area. The yellow is other, and that's a lot of native religions. But all along the coastlines especially, and up in the major parts of North and South America, you see there's Christianity. And also down here in Africa, along the southern part, there's major bands of Christianity. And over here in these islands uh, of the Pacific, and including Australia, that's these are areas where Europeans settled and spread Christianity. But let's get back to the causes of this age of discovery. There were innovations in navigational arts that were from Europe and from the Islamic world. And two of the major ones were the latine sail, this triangular sail right here you can see on this ship. It's called a caravel, that kind of ship. And it allowed this kind of ship to sail against the wind. So even if the wind was blowing directly at you, you could sort of sail like this in order to get through it. And then there's the astrolabe, which allows you to use the sun and stars to determine your latitude, how far north or south of the equator you are. And finally, there was support amongst the rulers of Europe for exploration and finding new trade routes. Henry the Navigator of Portugal uh, was a pioneer in that regard, and he helped to finance and encourage further exploration, especially of Africa, uh, for setting up trade colonies and getting slaves. So now we're to this long list of explorers and conquerors, conquistadors, and these are important people that you should know and be familiar with. So the first guy is Vasco da Gama, and he sailed for Portugal, and he's the first guy to reach India by sea. He sailed all the way down around Africa and managed to get to Calcutta, a major trade port in India. Then there's Christopher Columbus, who sailed for Spain, and he's known for discovering the New World. As in, when we say discovering, there are already people living there, A, and B, New World, it was new to Europeans. So a lot of the words that we use to talk about this age of discovery comes from a European perspective, and we're going to challenge that in class but what you need to know is that Christopher Columbus was the guy who made all of these other European explorers aware of the fact that there was this other continent to be explored. Then there was Hernando Cortez, who was from Spain, and he conquered the Aztecs. He sailed from the colonies that Christopher Columbus and the Spanish king set up in the small islands of the Caribbean and sailed into Mexico and 
within a few years conquered the entire Aztec Empire, like the one we learned about at the beginning of the year. Then there's Francisco Pizarro, also from Spain, another Spanish conqueror, conquistador, and he conquered the Incas, the only other uh, Native American empire that we learn about. So both of them are gone now. And he did it in a really cool, interesting way that we'll get a chance to talk about in class. It's basically trickery and a little bit of cultural misunderstanding and then violence. So last, there's uh, Ferdinand Magellan, the last guy from Spain. And he is known for the first circumnavigation of the world, as in going around the whole circumference of the earth. And he died halfway there, though, so he really didn't get to do that. Um, his crewmen did, and they made it all the way around, and no one remembers their names. Well, we have a list, but, it's, but we remember his name. Then there's Francis Drake, and he sailed for England, and he's mostly known for being an incredibly successful pirate. He also circumnavigated the globe, just like Magellan did, um, but he spent that time also being a pirate, which is exciting. And then he beat the Spanish Armada uh, as the second in command, I believe, of the naval force under Queen Elizabeth I that um, actually managed to destroy a huge number of Spanish ships and then chase them into a storm that destroyed almost all of the rest of them. It was a very impressive uh, feat. And then there was Jacques Cartier, and he was sailing for France, the only Frenchman we learned about here, and he explored the coast of what is now Canada. And this is worth knowing because Canada laid claim to, uh, France laid claim to Canada, and that's a significant reason that there's still French spoken in Canada because it was the French crown that laid claim to that area and they set up colonies there. Now the whole reason we learn about all these explorers and conquistadors is that they set up the world that would come after them. The Spanish explored certain areas, the Portuguese explored certain areas, the British went certain places, the French went certain places, and where they settled down and where they set up trade, they had serious cultural influences, some by conquering, some by trade, some by religious influence, and knowing where the explorers and conquistadors went can help you track the course of cultural influence over time, and that's what we'll be doing in class.